Good, absolutely beautiful morning, guys. We are out here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'm trying to stay quiet because we're by a couple houses and everything. But we're out here in a little bayou I hadn't tried out in a very long time, and I don't have too much time to fish, so I figured let's go ahead and hit it and try to see if we can catch anything. We're not going to waste too much time. We are going to be trying to keep today, but I will see y'all out there. All right, so first thing, with as warm as it is, really as warm as the water is, I do want to try throwing... Those are some mallards right there. I just realized those are mallards. Anyways, try throwing a top water. And the top water I'm choosing today is a buzz bait, which people are probably confused going. That's a freshwater top water. They work in salt water. I've got them to work in salt water. Especially in calm water like this. There's redfish up in here. Alright guys, I have been uh Oh yep, there we go. <laughs> right when I go to say something. Holy crap. Oh come on. Uh, God bless. Come on. Uh, I didn't think I got them good. Sucks that I was right. That was a red. That was a good red. I guess we're going to patrol. I see a lot of bait on this side. We're going to patrol this side and just keep throwing down it. I knew top water was back. There's some reds in there too. I want to get up in there, but it is. I've been up in there before. It is super shallow. You have to be super stealthy. Yeah, there's fish everywhere right here. I could retrieve this slowly while sitting down, I'd do it, but it's so hard to. It's better to be standing up, that way you got a better, higher vantage point to retrieve this thing how it's meant to be retrieved. You see a red? No, and I am seeing bait and stuff everywhere. Well, we are gonna hook a red. We're gonna get a red in the boat on this buzz bait. Oh, did y'all see that? Holy crap. Oh my gosh, that was sick. Holy crap. Crap! Ola! Emma, out from under there. Ah! Holy crap! Gosh, he is fighting to get under my kayak. Holy crap! Let off just a little bit. Oh my gosh! Ah. Right in the corner of his mouth. He's hooked good. Come here. Come here. Come here. No. Get. God bless. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get in it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, son. Oh, Randall's not going to be happy. 
Oh. Oh my. Oh crap. Look at that. Look. <laughs> Got a freaking mullet in his mouth. Oh guys. Oh, that freaking buzz bait. Look at that. Oh, hey, hey, chill out. Chill out. Hang on. I'm going to keep that in his mouth. Look at that. Ain't that crazy? He chased after this thing, too, like that. We're going to be taking him home because I just know his existence is not fun. But holy crap, guys. First topwater redfish of the year. What a freaking awesome fish. Hang on. We're going to take the grips out of his mouth, pose for a picture real quick. Yeah, he's got some weirdness going on besides that. There we go. All righty. Next one. Let's go. Man, look what he did to that buzz bait. Good thing about these buzz baits is that I've been able to bend them back pretty much every time. I am pretty happy with that. I will say, the reason I do plan on using bigger buzz baits this season comes summertime, but uh, right now, it's just these little ones are working so well. I hadn't even thought about pulling out a big one. Actually, I have thought about pulling out a big one. It's just when I did, it didn't work too well. Even at the pond when I was testing some stuff. Bend this crap out. Alrighty. There we go. Still got the scent all over it. Ready to go. Let's make sure that's good. We do need to bend that back that way. One more time. There we go. Okay. I think we're good. Yep. We are good. Alright. Leader's good. I just realized we forgot our gloves. Oh well. This was like a trip where I was like, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to have to just bare minimum it. I don't even have my anchor. I was very, I was debating heavily whether I should bring out my fish finder at all. I saw something that looked odd right here. I'm about to go right over it. Hopefully it's a flounder and it comes up. I don't know what that is. At some point, I do want to not throw top water. I am committed to this, but I would like to get a flounder or two before I leave. So we're going to go back here, throw top water a little bit, and see if we can't pick something up. I'd really love to. Look at all those little glass minnows. That's why I like this little bait. It imitates them running perfectly, and redfish will swarm on it. Not perfectly, but y'all y'all get what I mean. Like it looks like a school of um tiny little minnows running together, which is why I think this bait is freaking perfect right now. Right there at that next creek mouth. I don't even know if you can really call these creek mouths. I call them these are basically sloughs. Y'all can see me kind of start bending my rod tip down with it as I bring it to me. I want to show y'all this real quick. So, when it's out here, I want it on the surface. So I kind of have my rod high because if I have it low and start retrieving, you can see it starts going underwater. So I have my rod high and then I start bringing it down because here, we'll show you if we keep it up. This is what happens if we keep it up. See how most of the bait's out of the water? So, there is a little bit... Of skill associated with this not a lot but it takes some practice so right around here I start dipping my rod down because I can see it starting to belly up and then right around there I'll just turn it over that way it keeps that the uh, the bait part of it under the water underneath the blade that's what I want if it's not under there it looks kind of unnatural I can have it kind of tilted a little bit but I really like it directly under that blade or directly under like you know what I mean words aren't coming to today 
and you have to find the right speed to retrieve this thing where it's slow, but it's still on top of the water. It's not as simple as throw it out and retrieve, sadly. But it isn't hard to learn because as soon as you find the cadence of how fast you need to retrieve it, everything else is, all you have to do is worry about everything else. And that's just figuring out when to bend your rod down. But, as y'all can see, the seasonal changes are coming in, which is nice to see. It is about time. The reason we're doing the black and yellow one, though, is because we have low light conditions. And in my opinion, white just doesn't do that good in these low light conditions. Is it really that shallow? Well, the water does rise that high. Any of you uh, long time fans know that's right where I caught the first fish for this channel, which was the big black drum. Right there, it's crazy to see that it's completely out of water. That's why I said it was, sh why, I was wondering why it was so shallow right there. I was like, was it really that shallow? Well guys, this one was for me. <sighs> Technical difficulties this morning and I forgot to, uh, I had just shut the camera off and forgot to press record again. But, uh, nice to have one for yourself every now and then. Boy, oh my gosh, he's heavy. Holy Christ. Look at this, guys. On that freaking Booyah Buzzbait. We didn't get him on video, sadly. But, uh, freaking incredible eat. Saw him in this creek mouth over here. And... Saw him just wake on something. I was like, I guarantee you he's hungry. Threw to him and he ate. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. <laughs> on that booyah buzzbait. <laughs> Heck yeah, we're actually going to get a measure on him. And I might tag him and release him. Because uh, I really only need one fish today. There we go. Good night, look what he did to that buzz bait. We can bend that back, but holy crap. All right, let's get a measure on him real quick. Okay. Holy crap. He's a, uh, let's see. So that's the beginning. He's 29. Holy crap, he's 29 inches long, guys. Holy crap, he's 29 inches long, guys. <laughs> We're gonna tag him and release him. I don't keep ones that big. Yeah, I know. I know. Come on. Go in. There we go. Alrighty. Oh, come on. Hang on, you're going back, I promise. We just want to show you to the camera one last time. You gonna see that tag in him? Tag redfish. Oh, crap. I used the speckled trout one. We'll have to annotate that to them. Okay. Make sure he's good. Okay, we're good. Alrighty. Uh, we got time for maybe one more and then we gotta get off the water. I hate that y'all didn't get to see that one. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I let the ball drop on that one. I guess I just... I mean, I literally was coming down here, and I realized I was recording even after that one redfish, and I was like, hang on, I need to separate these two, because if I don't, I should have just kept recording and gone on, and then we would have caught that. It happens, guys. I'm, I'm not really thinking straight today, simply because I have so much stuff going on. We're going to get... We're going to get... Get ah, uh, bless. What am I thinking? Right, we're gonna get everything situated. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and head off the water because I do have some things I gotta go do today, and we're not done with this video just yet. I do want to show y'all a couple more things of where to actually, what to actually do this spring, and the trends that I'm already seeing. Thank God 
top water is back. I mean, like, I'm literally, thank you, God, for bringing top water back. It has been too long since I have seen a redfish wake on a top water. Top water. But we're going to talk about some more trends and get y'all more accustomed so y'all can actually get on some good fish this season. So I will see y'all back there. All right, guys, it's been a couple weeks, actually, since I recorded that video. But we are going to go over some of the trends I was seeing there and what I'm starting to see now. So with the spring transition finally coming in, this weather's finally warming up and staying warm, we're starting to see these fish finally get to their springtime transition zones, which a lot of people don't realize is very similar to your same spots you were fishing in the fall. So the same spots you were fishing in the fall usually will have fish in the springtime because the fish that were pushing back to go to their winter spots in the fall are now coming out of their winter spots to their fall spots, which are now their spring spots. So a lot of your creek mouse, oyster beds, and your bayous that are the main, your main bayous a little bit further out towards the mouth, not really pushed back. But just check out all your fall spots and everything. And when this water starts warming up, we're actually gonna be having a whole lot of fun with top water. That day I actually, it, the water was 68 degrees and we were catching top water fish left and right but the water cooled down again, so I hadn't really been able to get on top water again, but I have a feeling it's about to warm up for the final, or it's finally gonna start warming up good, and we're really gonna be able to get on that top water bite good. But I do hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like I said, these trips are always on Salt Strong's Insider Community, so if you're an Insider member, you can go check them out there. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I will look at them and answer them. And as always, I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.